Hey, it's Annalise here and do not worry, we are going to get straight into it with part two of my recap of Mr. J's chat for ANTM Cycle 18 with my girl Sophie Sumner. But you guys know the drill by now, please do subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell notification. Also, if you haven't seen part one of this video, I highly suggest you watch it before continuing. I am wearing my cape, basically because I need some superhero energy to get through all this ANTM gossip. Let's do this. I'm back. And for part two, we are starting off where Mr. J is talking about how us as contestants started pushing back against production. Um, an example of this would be when we arrived in Toronto for Toronto Fashion Week. They basically had to force us up the CN Tower because we were like, hell no, we are not doing a photo shoot. Yeah, a proper little bunch of divas. Let's just talk in general this season. There was a lot of rebuffing, let's put it that way, if that's even a good word to use. Like people were like, and both the Americans and the Brits were basically turning on production, saying, yes. we're done. Because so the show that ever really had to, Yeah, well, it had a little bit, but I think, and even from my POV, look, the show had jumped the shark with super smize and capes and nonsense. And it was just so stupid. And it was there. It was no longer about finding America's Next Top Model, which I'm gonna say Tyra came into this with a dream. She really was looking to find that next model and mentor her and, and, and bless her for doing this because it became a global phenomenon. But by this point, it was literally, they tried the high fashion cycle. Everything was just now a joke. Mm. I, I mean, for me, I felt like it, it, it was just like, I could see why you girls are like, how is this helping us model? Which leads into the next question, because there's so many about this. So once underscore upon underscore a underscore Sophie, her name is Sophie oh. too, says, <laughs> uh, thoughts on Asmarie's elimination. She seemed to be doing consistently well. And then she was eliminated out of nowhere for the stupidest thing. Tyra seems to like the idea of androgyny in fashion in the fashion world more than she ever likes the androgynous model models she actually casts. And as Marie jumped in, I'm going to read her comment. She just Ooh. put a teacup, and then uh, uh, and then and then uh, M D Tulloch wrote, "As Marie, you were wrongly eliminated." Tyra kept several other people who didn't uh, do challenges or photo shoots. You were my fave. So, what were your thoughts around that? As Marie's elimination. I mean, I, I'm going to keep my opinion out of it because As Marie is like, I don't know. She was like my kindred spirit. Like, I live for As Marie. She is <clears throat> everything. And still to this day, I follow her on social. We, we DM and comment all the time. I, I live for her. But what did you think of her elimination? Um, so, to be honest, As, as is, is the real deal. She really is. I, I, have, I honestly think she was too good for this cycle. I think mm. I think she was she knew her brand, she knew mm -hmm. herself. She was so calm and lovely to talk to and I, I can't speak for her but I'm sure, like she was so level-headed. She was my go-to like she's just a dream person. She's really yeah. lovely and and what an insanely amazing stunning look. Um yes. and to oh sorry and to, and to get eliminated on not putting in a butt pad like I was watching it back and I was like this is insane. Yeah, As Marie was way too good for any cycle of ANTM. Like, she was already like a fully fledged superstar. I had no clue why she was even there. Um, we were the two oldest in the house, so we used to sit down and have some proper mature conversations. Um, I'm actually really glad that she stood up to Tyra and didn't put the butt pad on. Yeah, I did kind of say she maybe took herself a little bit too seriously, but it was nice to see somebody stand up for themselves and do it respectfully. I talk a little bit about that in um, the music video um, recap that I've done. Um, yeah, I'll put the link to that above. But yeah, as Marie, too good, too fabulous, knew her brand, knew her shit. This is and, like... that's, and, that, and by the way, for those wondering, because there are a lot of questions, because um, someone also wrote, uh, Joe down the rabbit hole wrote, can you really blame Asmarie for not wanting to do the booty tooch challenge? It was very cringe and not her at all. And what was up, he also says, what was up with the Intoxabella names? 
Okay. Uh, let me, you let know, me just say, yeah, let go me just, ahead. Let me just put it out there. This season was very corny. Okay. This season was definitely aimed at, I don't even know. It sounds like everyone was losing their shit slightly. Um, you know, photo shoots had gone out of whack. You'd gone, basically, internally, the season was probably falling apart. And we were all trying to do our best in pretty much some really ridiculous circumstances. Absolutely. And then we would head to judging and we'd be like critiqued on these ridiculous photos. Can you imagine? So, um, sorry, I just completely um, for, missed, I forgot what that question was, but. Um, oh no, we were talking about um, the Asmari and her oh. booty chooch and the Intoxabella names and, and all that stuff. But yeah. So it's all ridiculous, but you're in this and you're in this weird headspace and you go along with it because quite honestly, you're 20, you're 21. You trust these people, you trust production. You're on one of the mm -hmm. biggest shows. The production value is insane. I remember like, all I wanted to do was talk to the crew and they held a meeting saying no one could talk to me because I was so interested in behind the scenes. Anyway, but, um, so, uh, I keep, I keep going over No, 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 this is good. I can go back to but, the question. We were talking about Asmarie's elimination and I think what you were, and, and, I, and I do want to add this, you know, because a lot of people have called it out. And this is the problem, I think, when a show starts to go downhill. And this is where producers didn't think to look at themselves. Mm. Because when the audience can see through the authenticity and they can see through all of this divisiveness, that's why the audience doesn't want to watch anymore. You're and so they, right. didn't, they did not have the foresight to look at themselves as the problem. So they heaped on, as Annalise just wrote down below, cheese, which we had in the previous All-Star Cycle. It was just cheese on cheese on cheese. And no one could face the fact, well, there were some producers, I will say this, absolutely producers who said, guys, you're ruining the show. And they were berated by the producers above them. Because the producers above, oh like many God. kind of malignant narcissists, just don't want to look at themselves as the problem. They just don't. And the show This all just makes became... so much sense now. Because we were going crazy. Mm -hmm. We really turned, like, not against production, but we scrutinized everything. We were like, they're going to choose this for a bad photo. They want this person out. Like, the cons we came up with every conspiracy theory. I, by the way, I never decide. saw the photo. So by that cycle, I used to even select the photos. Then it went to I select the top five. This cycle, I did the shoot. When we were done, I did my interview and I left. I didn't even do a top five mark. They chose it. whatever I they wanted. <laughs> oh yeah, and I would see photos. Now remember, I was at the screen, so I saw every photo go by you guys shot. I, I, I would sit there and watch and be like, this isn't even near this girl's best shot. But they absolutely, by that point, it was all very strategic. Who was going when? Wow, all the confirmation we needed. Like, I cannot even believe that Mr. J didn't even pick our top five shots. Mind is blown. Obviously, this has always been rumored, but to have Mr. J confirm it like that is absolutely crazy to me. So it basically means that our photos were being picked by producers who didn't really know anything about modeling. Did you see mine and Sophie's reaction? That was the first time I heard that and had it confirmed like that. We were such pawns. I didn't even realize it was to that degree. I always use the analogy of us being like pieces in a game to them, but that's just kind of scary when you think about it like that. I actually would have loved to see the whole roll of film from a photo shoot. It's actually how you learn to model. Um, it just gives you a good perspective of what the whole shot looks like. You can think you're doing one thing, but then you look at it back and you realize you're doing another. It's a really important part to modeling. And I would always ask to see the screen at a photo shoot. And as Marie, you were right, knew her brand, yet they brought on a branding expert that who had ever heard of. Um, who was going to teach everybody about branding and like the branding was like heaped up like just up the yin yang that wasn't even like real branding but as Marie was the example you're right she knew exactly what her brand was she's, she's a phenomenal model I live for and her and so kind yeah. super kind she Such was so solid person. in the house and I think towards the end I do remember like she wasn't, they kept saying full of herself. I don't think she was getting full of herself. I think she was honestly thinking, what on earth am I doing here? Yes. Like, you know, we're putting on a fake butt. Like, what the hell has that got to do with and that, and that's what And that's what another, uh, someone else wrote, Glitters0143 was responding to Once Upon a Sophie saying, 
It's because Tyra hates when girls disagree with her. We've seen that before. And you know, ultimately, here's the thing when you've got like this kind of weird pyramid of chaos, right? And it's not just one person at the top, there were a few. When you start challenging authority, what happens in any kind of like weird dictatorship, you gotta clamp down because if you see kind of the masses rising, wow, this almost sounds like the Hunger Games. But when you see the masses rising, right? And you're in the capital, what's gonna happen? The people ultimately, they've gotta clamp down and show power and authority. And like eliminating as Marie was just, just purely an ego driven thing. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I don't think they thought, I think they knew the top three. I don't think they wanted it to be me, Annalise and Laura. Um, you know, I was never even, I was cut all the way out. I wasn't even privy to conversations of that where I even heard that. Um, so I can't even speak to that, but I know that they had their sights set on certain people and there were just rumors that would flow around production. I, I didn't know, you'd hear different people. I am sweating up a storm over here. I'm telling you, there is no way that they wanted me in that final three with Laura and Sophie. I actually think that them two were kind of favored throughout the competition, so I'm sure they didn't mind that they were in there, but I kind of snuck in out of nowhere, totally by mistake. I really feel like my ANTM bubble has been popped with all of this information, just I mean, I've always been fully aware that ANTM is firstly a TV show, and that's cool, but they're kind of out here messing with your, your skills, your talent, your dreams, your career. Like, that is absolutely insane. I always gave them the benefit of the doubt. How wrong was I? It kind of feels like a lot of wasted energy, like us trying to do our best. So Dirty Dot Expensive said, I'm curious about the Ebony Alicia double elimination when Alicia quit and Tyra also sent Ebony home. Did production have a cut um, plan, sorry, have to cut a planned episode due to this double elimination or was it the amount of episodes set up so that there was always going to be a double elimination at some point with it conveniently happening here? Absolutely. There was going to be a double elimination. They had done it a few cycles before. They were, we were going to go in cycle 11. It was planned to go from four to two. And that was always the plan in episode 11. But because Alicia, you know, uh, um, wanted to leave, um, they actually, we ended up doing the double elimination beforehand. But uh, just so I love that Alicia chimed in and actually answered fans in my feed saying, oh, she yeah, she did. So these are Alicia's words I'm reading. She said, thank you, correct. The key words, oh, because someone said that they heard that she had been set up to win. So these are Alicia's words. She says, thank you, correct. The key words, setting me up, that doesn't mean I would have actually won. That just means they were setting it to look like that, or I was told. No one will ever know that for sure. I don't believe... Um, I don't believe it when I, I didn't believe it when I heard it and I still don't believe it now because it makes no sense. But thank you for actually writing that I said that. So apparently in some blog or, 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 or something online, she actually commented, oh yes, yeah, she wrote here because someone asked, yes, it's absolutely true. I was told by a producer or crew before going downstairs for the double elimination that I did want to go home uh, and why wasn't Ebony able to stay? So Alicia knew she was going to leave and she told producers that before the judging even happened. Wait a minute. Let me try and break this down. Did Mr. J just say that Alicia told production before elimination that she was definitely going to leave? Wow. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was in the air and she'd said it a few times, like if I'm in the bottom two, I'm going to leave. But I didn't know she confirmed it like that. But did production tell the judges? I bet they did. That means they set up that whole elimination. Oh no. And did Mr. J also say that Alicia said to production before elimination, um, why can't Ebony stay as well? But like, I'm confused because how did Alicia know that Ebony was gonna be in the bottom two? Confused.com. But I'll tell you what, it was so nice to hear Alicia's actual words. Um, when she came back after, after leaving, after quitting, she came back for the final runway show and she kind of had my back up a bit because she kind of came in with the attitude of, 
I was supposed to win, you guys are lucky that I quit type thing. And I didn't really appreciate that. I'm not saying that she said those words, but that was the kind of attitude. So hearing her say this and explain it in this way definitely makes me understand her a whole lot more. But let's hear what Sophie had to say. So what were your thoughts around that day? I remember your reaction being very visible in the show. You were so <laughs> upset for her um, that she was quitting and she was so emotional. We'd, listen, we'd had our ups and downs um, just because it's such a high pressure cooker. It really is. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, I think we were, so like, let me, when we flew to Hong Kong, we got off that plane. We had a 15 hour flight. Production gave us sleeping tablets to sleep on that flight because they knew that it would be nonstop when we got there. I'd never taken a sleeping tablet in my life. I actually think that is really irresponsible. Like, did I take a sleeping pill? Doesn't sound like me. Um, and so when we got there, so we were running on empty. I'm telling mm. like we, I was done. I remember just before the final, I went up to them and I was like, what do you want from me? I was like, do, mm. you can't take anything more. You have taken every, emotion like what do you want from me so i think with alicia she had had the craziest journey of up down up down mm -hmm. and i can't tell you how much that messes on your mind like mm. you know one minute you're getting best photo when you're not it sounds so silly but when you're in it my oh, god yeah. does it completely destroy you Alicia did so well in her season of Britain's Next Top Model. She was like constantly praised and stuff. And I think she just expected to do just as well on ANTM. So basically it was like a massive slap in the face to her to be in the bottom two. And so often as well, like that up, down, up, down thing totally would have messed with me. Um, so we... You're removed from the world. Think of it like a bad dream. Think of it no. like you're, you're stripped from your world. You've got no phone no connection to the outside world. You're put in this world that is bizarre. Uh, you got cameras in your face. You're not allowed to speak and unless you're my- the cameras, unlike Brit, sorry. The cameras, Go unlike ahead. Britons, did not turn off until you went to sleep. Oh my God, I have to say this. So when you stay in the hotel for a week, they then randomly, production were like, just get ready, okay? They'd already chosen your, um, your like outfit. We got ready, we go on the Universal Walk. Remember that first Universal Walk? Of course, We yeah. had no idea, we're in the back of a car, suddenly, we didn't know we were gonna start filming. We'd just been in complete isolation for a week, which now sounds like nothing, but back then, <laughs> it was quite insane. And, and we got out and I remember the producers saying something to, to all of us like, remember you need to shine, or something about grabbing, say more for airtime. It was something mm -hmm. about airtime, and the cameras never turned off until every single person was asleep. So I remember Laura used to be up until four in the morning, but in your head, you were like, oh my God, I'm losing airtime because the cameras are awake. You know, mm. you knew they were running around. So mm. you literally didn't sleep. As long mm. as somebody else was asleep, you were doing something because they yeah. told you before going in that you needed the airtime. And so that was already bizarre. Um, so yeah, so when Alicia went, just going back to that, like I, I think my heart broke because off cam, not off yeah. camera, on camera, but what they edited out, like this girl was just in like a whirlwind in her yes. brain. Yes. And, and, yes. and she was doing something selfless by putting Ebony in and then it didn't work. And like, you know, they, they messed her over slightly on that one. I don't know, it was just, she had given everything. And she was like, I don't know what you want. Like in photo shoots, like even like that silkworm one or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, you mm -hmm. would have, we were so confused because we might get great feedback from you and then we'd go into judging and that it would be like this horrific feedback. Like there was- Okay, so, so, and that's what happened too, because in previous cycles, obviously I used to select the top five photos. Tyra would even read my comments. Oh, well, Mr. J would say, blah, 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 in judging. That cycle, Tyra didn't read my comments. I didn't, because- That makes so I didn't, much sense. Because I didn't give the comments anymore. Because quite frankly, no one really gave a shit what I had to say oh, anymore, yeah. which was fine. But I did we my cared. job. And we the thing cared is, a lot. <laughs> I know. And so in all I could do really in in photo shoots was give you guys the honest feedback. You know, when you guys were great, you were great. When you were slipping, like in your Hello Kitty shoot, when you were doing your little robotic thing, that wasn't your best shoot. But I told you that there because my job was always to make sure you guys had accurate feedback in the moment. Okay, I'm dying to know this. I don't know this. So when we're on so basically before we go on stage elimination i'm sure people have said this but you're in a holding room and you are yes. in that bloody holding room which 
is the tiniest little room in this mm -hmm. whole massive studio. It was like, at the moment, it's like a it teeny little office. room. Just it was awful. literally the size of like this little office and there was like 12 of us. It's so funny, and Annalise just wrote, it's the size of a shoebox. You know, in, in my novel, we won't talk about my book today, but in my novel, when the main story takes over, uh, oh, you've got your copy, yes. I haven't read it yet, but it came, yes. thank you so much. You're welcome, you you're welcome. Phone. But when the main story takes over, which is in, in like the, the big main story of the book is in chapter 12, I got really short chapters. Right there, I talk about how the girls are stuffed into what we call the cupboard, this airless room where they can't talk. And that really is, is, is really inspired by reality. I always felt horrible for you guys. This is the best way I can put it, is everyone's on. Apart from Kelly and Knight, but Tyra's like on. Right, mm -hmm. like yeah. when and, and we're not, mm -hmm. and we're not in judging for that long. So people are like, oh, Tyra. I'm like, I don't know anything about her. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't and, know and you know, to be do. fair, the real and the reason why I wrote my my novel is that the real reality show, the real show was behind, oh, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Oh my god. The real show is behind the scenes of that show. What you guys got, what all the fans got to watch on camera, great, fun, crazy. You Gosh. need to go live with a producer. I gotta hear this. If there's one you still talk to. <laughs> well, okay, I, I, I talked to many actually. I'm, I'm, and I might, I'm probably gonna bring in one in my fan episode. Uh, of who, yeah, we'll, we'll save that. But let's no, keep but going because there's tons of questions here. But okay, go wait, ahead. last one though. Sorry, so when, so when we went into that holding area waiting to see who got eliminated, what happened? Like the producers must have been taught, you know the bit when they film it on their own? Mm -hmm. What actually happens there? Because normally it was quite So long by time. then, do you want to know what really happens there? Yeah. Do you really want to know what happens? That yes. cycle is awful. They literally say, everybody, we need positive and negatives for Sophie. We need positive and negatives for Sophie. So basically, they would just tell the judges, give me a positive and negative on every girl. We'll cut the judging together. So everyone had to give a positive and a negative for each girl. There was no this discussion. so twisted. We had to come up with negatives even when we didn't have one. They were like, well, give me a negative. So we would just have to come up with a negative. Wow. So we had to give positive and negatives and they spliced the editing. And it wasn't wanted. like that before? No, earlier on there were real discussions about who was strong, who was weak, da 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 da. It had become such a machine. Let's bang it out, blah blah blah, positive, negative, positive, negatives. And a group of editors and producers decided how it was all going to shape out. Next question. <laughs> Am I even surprised anymore? All I'm saying is that I could have done with more positive comments in there. The veil has been lifted on ANTM, and the bride ain't pretty. So, little Becky Hare says, was there any more tea on the judging with Kelly and Louise's big blow up? And you wrote, ooh, blow, go ahead. What's the Look ooh? Look at me just like getting involved. What's um, the ooh? So I think my opinion on that is Louise was a working model in the UK, right? She was doing yeah. commercial, she knew her look, she knew what she was doing. And, and she knew, and she, she, she was very sure of herself and proven. And that threatens people, right? Yeah. You, know, you do realize that, right? It's, it's, oh. like that say, it's like that saying, shade is only thrown to cover up things that shine. Remember that. I'm gonna get it tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> I should, right? Go ahead. Um, that makes so much sense because she was very sure of herself. And I guess a lot of us were just playing the part. That is very interesting, Mr. J. Um, so my, my feeling on that is that when Kelly went in, so don't forget, Kelly was very good at talking in sound bites. So Kelly would throw she things was. like these kind of funny comments, but when you're in something and yes, she was like running around on set to get something, but somebody's throwing these sound bites at you, it does come across really abrasive and aggressive because we're British and we're used to people just not really speaking their mind. So I think <laughs> that that contributed to her like having a meltdown and breaking out and like, why she, you, on that final interview, that girl was scratching herself. Sorry, on the final elimination. She mm. was scratch, she was so nervous. She was biting her nails. Watch it back, it is wild. She was so nervous, but she knew that she didn't want anyone to speak to her like that. And I think because mm -hmm. the television language is so clipped and Kelly was so good at it that she, you know, we, we I can't describe to you how fragile we are in those moments. You don't have your family, you don't have, you know, your, your, your the support other girls, system, your friends, but it's competition. Yeah. Like it is, I've never had a mental state like that in my life. It is bizarre. So like, I think everything probably she, I think she just exploded and she was like, I just, I can't, I can't take this. 
and I can't. And I say, and I say, good for her. I think I probably, you know, I, I, I don't. I've said this several times in my chats. I would never have wanted to have been a contestant on America's Next Top Model ever, ever, ever. Uh, it is forever. <laughs> kind of even tainted, you know, even when I do interviews for other things, you know, I sit down with other producers and I'll be very honest with you, I sit in front of a camera for interviews sometimes and I really worry, like on something that's edited, not live. Live I love because, you know, they can't edit. But, you know, when you sit down to tape something, I'm always second guessing the intention of the producer sitting on the other side of the camera because, they know what they're doing. I, I've learned how to speak in sound bites, obviously years of practice, but still things can be always rearranged to kind of put forth the narrative that somebody else wants. And it's no wonder now that we question reality, reality TV or whatever people oh, are putting out there. Oh, I watch it all so differently. I can't mm -hmm. tell you. I watch The Bachelor. I watch, I've, I've watched Housewives and I know a few of them and I've been on set in the background. Like I can't, like, yeah, I, 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 I hadn't realized how manufactured it are behind the yes, scenes. Yes, yes, I had yes. no, I, I didn't clock that. Which sound leads bites, into the... said, what are sound bites? They're just quick ways of speaking with like, which, like, um, I don't know. You got it. Oh, <laughs> I can't like, think of oh, so, like, so a negative sound bike would say, would be like, if you like, let's say something photo. Kelly would say. So I would say, um, she's a train wreck that looks like a deer in headlights. That's a sound bite because they can use the whole bite. So yeah, sound bites. Um, an example of some of my sound bites would be, you know where I'm going, right? Kyle is dry like toast with no butter. No one wants that. Um, also, chocolate brownie is here. And let them be jealous. I am too weighed down by my diamonds to care. Yeah, sound bites. Why don't you let me know what your favorite soundbite is from ANTM Cycle 18 in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching part two of my recap reaction to Mr. J's ANTM chat with Sophie Sumner. Um, I mean, it was a doozy, right? The thing is, is that it just keeps on getting juicier. So keep your eyes peeled for parts three and four. Please do subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification so you don't miss out on anything. And as always, feel free to binge watch all of my previous content and I'll see you soon.